it's really important we, we have to look back from where we've come so that we know that we're going our children need to know uh, our history so that their children will know our history because if you don't know your history if you don't know where you've been you really don't know where you're going and it's important to reach back to those individuals whose shoulders that we stand on who make it possible for where we are today and we where we are uh, yet to go it was here at Zion Baptist Church in Cincinnati, Ohio. The year was 1961. History was made. Reverend LaVon Ventral Booth, pastor of this church, held a meeting with 33 delegates and formed what would become one of the most powerful and influential religious organizations in the nation. Its name seemed to define its mission, the Progressive National Baptist Convention. In 1961, Dr. L. V. Booth, Dr. L. Venchel Booth, made one of the most courageous steps in African American Baptist history when he organized the Progressive National Baptist Convention. Well, you're talking about a man who was not only a gospel preacher, the man was a poet. The man was a dreamer. Uh, he had all of what God would give somebody who is really a renaissance man. And uh, uh, he, he, he wrote songs, uh, poetry, uh, he could preach, uh, he could teach, uh, he was a great leader. And uh, he knocked down doors and barriers that people were heretofore afraid to even attempt to try. Dr. Gardner Taylor has often said, and we all agree, that Dr. Booth, in organizing the Progressive National Baptist Convention, gave Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. a denominational address. The other convention had unwelcomed him. The Progressive National Baptist Convention and Dr. Booth welcomed him. An organization anchored by its faith yet also determined to answer a call to be politically progressive and politically active. Reverend Booth could knock on the door and open it for you when a whole lot of folk couldn't. Sometimes you don't have to be kicking and beating the door down in order to get someone to open it. He knew how to get somebody to open it by using finesse, tact, diplomacy. He had it going on. Understand, this came during a time when America's lingering season of discontent was the backdrop. Segregation and racial hatred offered limited hope for many citizens in this country that constitutionally proclaimed all its citizens equal. Some momentum to force dramatic change had occurred with the U.S. Supreme Court's historic ruling on school desegregation and the Montgomery bus boycott stirred the souls of citizens crying out for fairness and justice. The men who served as our presidents were also civil rights champions, in addition to being great gospel preachers, Gardner C. Taylor, uh, William Augustus Jones, Charles Adams, uh, C. Mackey Daniel, the list goes on, Ralph Canty, who was elected as treasurer of the Young People's Department in 1964 in Atlanta, Georgia, and became the president of the convention some years later, the youngest to also have been elected. So the convention gave young people an opportunity. And with tenure, you had a chance. You didn't stay in office for life. Over the last 47 years, I would say that uh, the progress and the success of that uh, convention has been enormous, especially for the uh, African-American community. 
it afforded the uh, leadership to be uh, given to more than just one person. I think over a period of three to four years, you had to leave. And what that does is that you bring on new leadership, but you still have the old leadership still there to kind of deal with transition. And everyone worked together, and you had a better operation. It brought guys like Dr. Martin Luther King. It brought people from uh, the Bahamas. It brought people from the Caribbean and people from everywhere. And uh, because wherever the African Americans and the African uh, diaspora dropped us off, uh, we needed the kind of leadership that PNBC uh, was forging. And so I would say that in 47 years, it has been a God sin in terms of breaking down barriers, uh, getting people elected to office. A lot of the office holders or ex-civil rights workers down through the years, Andy Young and uh, many, many, many people uh, came in and did tremendous jobs. And uh, of course, you know, the great work that Dr. King did. Well, although I was very young when the convention was uh, founded, my father's always been a very uh, enterprising, uh, innovative man. And I would see him uh, go about here uh, in Cincinnati and throughout the country uh, during the time that the convention was founded. So he was always a man that uh, worked very hard and was very dedicated uh, to what he did. So I, I saw that particular aspect of it in the early years. And then later on as I began to attend conventions and as the conventions were here, uh, I saw his work uh, began to come into fruition.